If you're living in Dubai or you're moving to Dubai and you're wondering whether you should buy or rent, then this video is for you. Because today I'm going to be running the numbers with you, specifically in the Dubai real estate market on buying versus renting. Which one will actually leave you better off and in which situation? I've lived in Dubai for almost two years now and so far I have been renting because so far renting has made a lot more sense for my particular situation and my particular circumstances. But I've also been considering buying for quite a long time. And after I started running the numbers for both scenarios for renting a place long term versus buying a place, I was actually quite surprised just how much there is actually to consider. And I was very surprised by the outcome. Before we go into the analysis, let's talk about how to rent and how to buy here in the UAE. Now I made a full guide on both the process to rent an apartment and to buy an apartment here in the UAE, which you can view down below in the description down below. In short, if you're looking to rent and you're looking to stay in the same apartment for the entire year, then you will probably find an apartment on one of these rental platforms like Property Finder, Bayou. But if you're not staying for the entire year, as many people in Dubai are not, I would actually highly, highly recommend that you rent from a platform called Blue Crown. It's essentially a short-term rental platform where you can just pick the date when you want to stay in the apartment. And I use this platform many times and I was assuming that I was actually paying a lot more for this convenience of having it be short term and things like this but actually i've run the numbers and i'm going to make a whole separate video on this topic it will actually come out cheaper to rent via blue ground when you consider that includes the utilities the taxes and everything like this and if you're looking to rent via blue ground make sure to check out my form down below in the description down below when you're ready because you're going to use it to get 250 dollars off your rental however if you're looking to buy then I actually have business partners down below where we have partnered with a trusted agent where we can give you VIP service throughout the entire process at no extra cost to you beyond the standard commission. So if you're interested in buying, then I highly, highly recommend you use that service down below in the description. Now, generally, the way I think about this is that there are non-financial factors when it comes to buying versus renting, and there are financial factors, where the financial factors are simply which one will, at the end of the day, lead to you spending less money in terms of what I called unrecoverable costs. And overall, at the end of the day, which one, when you consider everything like opportunity costs and things like that will actually leave you better off for an equivalent place in terms of your net worth or your total financial position. And in terms of non-financial factors, we have things like, well, which one do you prefer? Do you prefer to own where you have some more freedom or you perhaps have a bit more hassle, like you don't have the ability to just call up a landlord to fix a problem or something like that. So this is always case by case. But to get to the crux of this video, let's now run the numbers on which one will actually be cheaper in Dubai, buying or renting. The way I think about this is that when I'm buying a property, even if it's a property where I'm going to live myself, I simply look at it as an investment, just like any other investment, where if I rent it out, obviously the return I get on it is the appreciation plus the net rental yield that I get on that investment. Whereas if I live there myself, I still think about the net rental yield I get on it. But the way I simply think about it is that the rental return on the apartment where I live is simply the rent that I save by not having to pay rent to someone else, if that makes sense. What I really look at is that over the period over which that I assume I'm going to have this place, what are the total, what I call unrecoverable costs of either buying or renting, where an unrecoverable cost means, for example, the interest on my mortgage, which is a payment that simply goes to the bank that I do not get back. So the way we're going to be looking at this is that we're going to be comparing the equivalent place when it comes to renting it versus buying and we're going to go through all the costs and look at which one comes out cheaper in terms of these unrecoverable costs over a set time period. And what we're going to be looking at on the renting side is this apartment here in the Marina Gate building in Dubai Marina that looks like it is renting for 150,000 AED a year. It is one bedroom, two bathrooms, 763 square foot. Whereas for buying, I found a very equivalent place in the same building, which is this one, which is selling for 2.3 million AED. Again, one bedroom, two bathroom, and pretty much the same size. So we're going to run through all the costs and look at what comes out cheaper. Now, if you want just a quick estimate, Property Finder themselves have this calculator over here where you can input the rent, the purchase price, and a lot of other details. And it's going to give you some estimate on how long you need to stay in the place for buying to start to make more sense. But I actually find that this calculator is not adequate. It doesn't consider absolutely everything. So I made my own calculator, which by the way, if you want to use the same calculator yourself, I'm actually going to make this a lead magnet to my newsletter. Basically, I have a newsletter called Nomad Notes, where I send a bunch of offshore news, news about taxes, life in Dubai for free every single week. So 
if you give your email down in the description, I'm going to send you this calculator that you can use to sort of play around with the numbers yourself. So there's a few variables in here. First of all, we have years to stay, which is how many years do I assume that I'm going to stay in this place? I'm going to put that as five. Then we're going to have service charges, the size of the apartment, stock market investment return, interest rate, annual rent increase and property price annual increase and we'll sort of go through why all these numbers matter as we go through these calculations so first let's talk about upfront costs so when you're buying a property in dubai there's quite a lot of upfront fees that you're going to need to consider first of all we have some government fees specifically we have a four percent dubai land department fee which is going to be four percent of the purchase price plus a 580 dirham admin fee for apartments and offices or 430 for land or 40 dirhams for off plan then we have property registration fees which for properties valued above 500,000 is going to be 2,000 dirhams plus 5% VAT and then if you're using a mortgage you're going to have a fee of 0.25% of the loan amount plus 290 dirhams then you're going to have agency fees which are going to come out to 2% of the purchase price plus 5% VAT and sometimes you have what are called conveyance fees which are approximately between 6,000 and 10,000 AED and then we have more mortgage fees from the bank side so the bank is going to charge 1% of the loan amount for the bank mortgage arrangement fee and then you're going to have a property valuation fee that the bank is also going to charge to value the property which is going to be between 2,500 and 3,000 1500 plus 5% 5 VAT. So assuming you're buying a 2.3 million dirham property and assuming you're putting down 40% as a down payment, which by the way, in the UAE, if you're self-employed, most likely you're going to have to put up 40% as a down payment. It's possible to get 20%, which is the standard for salaried employees. But I spoke to some mortgage advisors and basically you would need to have a company with a minimum seven employees, at least at the time of recording this video, in order to get 20% as a self-employed individual. So if you're a business owner, then you're gonna put up 40% most likely. And if you're salaried, you can get away with 20%. And when we add up all of these fees, the 4% government fee comes out to approximately 92,580 dirhams the agent fee comes out to approximately 46,000 dirhams and all the various mortgage fees come out to approximately 20,315 dirhams and all the other fees come out to approximately 4,000 dirhams leaving us with total fees of 162,892.5 dirhams when we contrast this with renting the place obviously your upfront costs are only going to be the agent commission which can be five percent of the total rental value in this case with a rental value of 150,000 dirhams you're looking at a value of 7,500 dirhams as the agent commission and assuming you stay in the same place across this entire period which here we're assuming is five years then you're not going to have this every single year but obviously if you move every single year you're going to have this extra cost every single year but now let's get into the reoccurring cost of owning versus renting this place in marina gate you can calculate your monthly mortgage payment right here on property finder and for the purposes of these calculations we're assuming a mortgage interest rate of four percent because that appears to be right around where the interest rates are currently which for this purchase price gives us a value of 7,284 dirhams a month whereas the rent payment for this place at 150k a year would come out to 12,500 dirhams a month so just look at the monthly payments the mortgage payment is much cheaper than the rent payment but obviously this is not nearly enough to anyone that knows anything about this you can't just look at the monthly payment because that would be extremely deceiving because when you own there are a lot of extra costs that you need to consider in dubai whether you're renting or owning you have a five percent municipality tax that you need to pay to the government every single year and that five percent is calculated on the rental value of your apartment if you're renting whereas if you're owning it is calculated at 0.5 percent of the purchase price of the property and if you're owning you also need to pay what are called service charges to the building slash the community where you live and we can actually see right here on property finder that the service charges for this particular building in dubai marina come out to 14 dirhams and 40 cents per square foot so those service charges on an apartment of 764 square feet plus the 0.5 percent municipality tax comes out to a total of 1875.13 dirhams a month and in the case of renting the 5 percent municipality tax which you pay as part of your diva bill comes out to 625 
11 dirhams a month. Now, obviously, both cases, whether you're owning or renting, are going to have monthly utilities that you're going to need to pay. But in both cases, these are going to be the exact same value. So we're not actually going to count those in this analysis because they're going to cancel each other out. In the case of buying, you obviously need to also consider repair. So we're assuming that you're going to spend around 1% of the property value. I looked online and that seems to be a reasonable assumption on repairs, which comes out to, on average, 1916.67 dirhams a month. And then in the UAE, when you own an apartment, you also have a mandatory life insurance if you're taking out a mortgage. And that will be roughly around 0.6% of your mortgage value per year and per month. In this case, it comes out to 692.5 dirhams a month. So this leaves us with a total monthly payment. So this is just total cash flow going out of your bank account every single month in the case of buying to 11,768 dirhams. And in the case of renting, this comes out to 13,125 dirhams. But obviously, this is still not everything because as we all know, when you're paying a mortgage, not all of that are going to be unrecoverable costs, i.e. not all of that is going to be interest because some of that is going to be going towards your principal, which is still your money. So on a 25-year mortgage, I calculated the amortization table for this kind of loan. Over five years, on this kind of loan, you would have paid a total of 180,128.3 dirhams in principle in total after the five years, which when you average it out across this entire time period, comes out to an average value of 3,002.14 dirhams every single month, meaning that your net monthly unrecoverable cost on average over this period in the case of buying is only going to be 8,766 dirhams a month, whereas for renting, it's still the same value as before. So actually, over this entire period, you are actually paying much less every single month in terms of unrecoverable costs versus renting. Obviously, this is still not everything because we need to consider that when you bought the place, you had a lot of unrecoverable costs right at the beginning. Remember those pesky fixed costs we talked about right at the start well when you add all of this up so you add up all these unrecoverable costs every single month for five years for buying plus the cost that you had in the beginning you get a total value of costs that you have to pay that you don't get back over this entire period of 688,862 dirhams and in the case of renting this is much simpler to calculate you just add up the small rental commission at the beginning plus all of the rent plus the tax that you're paying over the entire period of five years, and you get total unrecoverable costs of 787,500 dirhams for this entire period. So yes, in the case of this apartment, with the assumption that you're staying in the place for five years with a 25 year mortgage and a mortgage interest rate of 4%, you do in fact pay less over this entire time period of renting. But this is still not everything because as the financially savvy of you will know that obviously what you could do is instead of paying all of this money in your down payment and your fixed cost in the beginning, you could have just invested that same amount of money in let's say the S&P 500, which would have given you a lot of extra investment returns that you do not get in the case of buying. So assuming conservatively that the S&P 500 is going to keep increasing at a rate of 7% per year on average over these five years, in the case of renting, you would have actually earned an extra 374,637 dirhams in investment returns because you don't have all of this money tied up in a down payment plus all of these fixed costs in the beginning. But that is still not everything because in the case of buying as well because you're paying less in cash flow every single month you also have a lot more money available to invest into the stock market every single month compared to renting so when you take the difference between the net cash outflow so the first numbers we considered and we would then invest that difference in the case of buying into the stock market over this five-year time period that would give us extra investment returns in the case of buying of 5698 dirhams so that sort of cancels out some of the extra investment returns you would earn on investing the deposit plus the fixed cost in the case of renting. So when we consider this with these assumptions, your net wealth would actually be higher in the case of renting, except this is still not everything because obviously, most likely, your property is also appreciating in value. And now this is the assumption that is the most difficult to make probably out of all of this because in Dubai, we don't have as much historical data about property prices because in Dubai, everything is so new. It's only really become super popular in the last five to 10 years. And the property index looks something like this. In the past few years, we have had some crazy returns of more than 10% a year in property appreciation, but we've also had periods when it's been going down. So it's really difficult to estimate. I'm just going to plug in a number of 5% a year on property appreciation in Dubai. I think it's quite reasonable 
given when we understand how where the world is going places in the west are going down and more and more people are going to dubai it's the most popular location in the world for millionaires to move to and the trend is only going to continue so with these assumptions after five years you could sell this property at a total profit of 635,447 dirhams which will be added to your net wealth at the end but obviously when you sell the place you're also going to have a closing costs and in Dubai you're also going to have a small fee on the bank side for paying off your mortgage early which is going to be either 1% of the remaining mortgage balance or 10,000 dirhams, whichever one of those is lower. So we'll just assume that that is 10,000 for simplicity. And added to that, you're gonna have a 2% agency fee again when selling the property, which will leave you with a total closing cost of 68,708 dirhams. So when we add all of this up together, meaning the extra investment return on the extra cash flow that you have free to invest compared to renting every single month, plus the extra investment return in the case of renting, because you can invest the deposit at the fixed cost. And we consider the profit on selling your property compared to the purchase price minus the fixed cost of selling the place you're left with a net effective unrecoverable cost after considering your investment returns at the end of five years of 116,425 dirhams in the case of buying and 412,862 dirhams in the case of renting so yes at the end of five years you would actually be better off if you had bought the place but this assumes that the property values are going to keep increasing there's no property crash or anything like that he assumes the the S&P 500 returns 7% instead of like 13% or something like that. These are obviously very difficult assumptions to make and I absolutely don't have any idea what is actually going to happen. We will see that as we start playing around with these numbers, let's say we change the stock market investment return to 10% and we change the property price appreciation to only 1%. Now, suddenly, after five years, it will be much better off renting. And obviously, the more we change this number at the top on the years that you're going to stay in the place, let's say you're going to stay for 10 years, then the more and more better off you are in the case of buying. Now, I'm sure you thought we were finally done, but we still didn't cover absolutely everything. Because the thing with renting is that just because you're paying 150K a year now for this apartment doesn't mean that that same rent is going to stay over the next to five, 10 years. Obviously, most likely these rents are going to keep increasing. So you need to account for that in these calculations. So you can plug that in, in here at the annual rent increase. Now in Dubai, a reasonable estimate might be 5%. It could be more than that, which would mean that your average monthly payment in terms of your rent is not 12,500, but over the five years, it would start at 12,500 and end up at a much higher price, which will lead to an average rent payment of around 13,800 dirhams, which will lead to, again, a much higher overall cost at 877,786 dirhams and a net effective cost at the end of the day of 500 thousand dirhams now let's say you're interested in buying without a mortgage you want to buy fully in cash now in this case it's very very obvious that in terms of your housing costs you're going to be much much better off because even though obviously your housing costs are not zero there's going to be repairs you've got your service charges but they are so low that you are going to save a considerable amount of money and in this case whether buying is a good decision will really depend on what you think will happen to dubai property prices versus other investments like the sp500 for example so overall what what should you do then well I have no idea. That obviously depends on you. But I think now that you know all these numbers, you know all the numbers to consider, then you can hopefully make an informed decision for you. I am going to buy here most likely unless something crazy happens in the next few years because overall, I think it does make a lot of sense when you run the numbers with reasonable assumptions because the thing is when you compare Dubai to many other top tier cities in the world like London, New York, things like this and you look at the relative cost of buying versus the relative cost of renting the relative cost of buying is actually much lower than in many other places we can just look at this here comparing london to dubai we can see that renting a one-bedroom apartment on average in the city center in london is around 24.6 percent more expensive versus dubai keep that in mind because once we look at price per square meter to buy an apartment in the city center in london this is almost 200 percent more so while it's more expensive in both cases in London, buying is significantly more expensive, buy a lot more 
compared to renting, if that makes sense. You're going to find that it makes a lot more sense, relatively speaking, to buy in Dubai versus a lot of these places. But despite all of this, I would still recommend you rent first when you're moving to Dubai. That's exactly what I did because you don't really know the areas. You don't know where you're going to want to live. You don't even know probably if you want to stay in Dubai long term. Again, whether you're looking to rent or Dubai, I covered both of these processes on exactly how the process works on this channel. So I will leave both of those videos right here for you to watch. And with that said, that was a lot of numbers. I hope you found this insightful. With that said, watch one of these videos and I'll see you in the next one.